Hello, hello. Today is the day two of Axie Origins season one, and uh, look, we already have someone going in the challenger. So Sushi One already came up to challenger, and the rest is following. Um, and so here is how the meta looks like in day two. So, um, what is happening is that uh, as yesterday, you see a, uh, you see a lot of the pendulum scale, a beast as the tank, and then Aqua. Uh, but very lucky that uh, they already got the bloodlust rune. Um, so those best definitely give them an advantage. And then uh, we do see a bug, which is pretty interesting. Um, so maybe I'll look into this team uh, at some point. And then, um, yeah, there are basically mostly birds, aqua, and with some combination of other another aqua. Um, well, bug is interesting, a beast, a bird. Yep, so that is pretty much uh, usually how the team goes. And of course, I've skipped this one, number seven and number 13. Those are also very interesting. And I'm probably going to look into one of those, probably the, the one from um, seventh rank at the moment. So those are the sustained builds, it looks like. But before I go into those, let me just scroll through and see what else is there. So another sustain here. Um, okay, at least one without a beast at the front, which is interesting. Uh, but wow. I see someone already got two Ravens tactic. Um, pretty impressive, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would say the meta is mostly pendulum scale beasts with uh, some aqua or very aggressive build. And um, the sustained builds, right? Um, so I would say those are the two viable stuff on top and then you scroll down to here and I assume this is more of like a poison build because uh, with the runes um, so yeah so this is how it is so far at the moment and you do get see people starting to get the epic runes um, with the bloodlust being on top which is what you would expect in a way uh, in the f top of the meta and um, you do see some Ravens tactic a bit further down as well. But today, okay, I'm going to actually dive into a uh, sustained build, which uh, is a bit different in terms of a uh, very different in terms of gameplay uh, compared to an aggro build, which is, you know, trying to hit, hit, hit. So, and sustained build. So, uh, Geo Yanni 23 has a very interesting build, uh, quite like the color of this actually I must say I don't really see it that much and of course a very interesting rune as well that uh, you might not see that often so let me just see so you have a plant um, um, and okay I might as well just click into uh, each axi and go from there so I assume actually I don't know which one is going to be the front and the back and I assume this might be the front. I'm not too sure actually. Um, but okay, do, they do have two plants and a dawn. And dawn, oh, I love this color. But okay, let's just look at one of the plants first. So this plant uh, interestingly plays cucumber slice. When I say interestingly, it's because uh, it was very OP and it got nerfed. Um, but I assume that it's still powerful enough that. Um, I guess this, this person um, wants to play this card. Um, it's an AOE heal, so it's, it can, can be very strong, especially given the healing boost. But the nerf is basically that it gives less healing boost and banish is pretty the, the biggest one because then that just means you can only play uh, Kirin Mercedes once per game. And once you play it, it's gone. Um, and then another thing to know is Clover. Clover can be pretty strong. So Clover is a summon uh, and it gives you leaves. And once you have the leaves, um, then uh, it heals you for a bit every turn, at the end of the turn. Uh, and um, actually the key point, well, not the key point, but one of the uh, side effects of having a um, summon is that you can actually place them in the front or some position that allows uh, the summon to block an attack so 
that basically can also be used as a, in a way a shield to tank one hit. So that's pretty interesting. Another interesting thing I think is Silent Whisper. So this is basically to deal with um, poison teams, right? So that, um, in so the basically what happens is that the poison stack instead of um, you taking poison damage, you actually the poison heals you for one HP per poison stack. Uh, and that happens for six turns, which is basically three times, uh, which is pretty significant, I would say. And um, I would say the last one, last card that's interesting, actually these two cards both are interesting, um, but this one was the one that I'm looking at, is the one that applies fear, so the secret that applies fear, which I find it very, very, very annoying to play against, especially as an aggro build, where of course you want to hit them, but as, as, uh, as soon as you hit, uh, into this secret, then you have, have this fear, and what fear does is that, well, it's a debuff where once you, your Axie got fear, this debuff, then whenever you use an attack card, then it shuffle the confused into the draw pile, right? No, it's the draw pile, meaning um, you will draw it pretty soon, right? Not the discard pile, draw into draw pile. So if, let's say, you play two attack cards after you get feared, then you're shuffling two confused cards into your draw pile and you are probably going to get it very soon. So it's it's very annoying to play against it's as an aggro build. And uh, yeah, I was going to skip over this one, but actually cleanse, Cleanser can be very interesting or very important. Uh, again, um, against aggro, but also against poison because it basically allows you to uh, remove any debuff, so uh, there are a lot of debuffs in this game like um, what's that one called, uh, that basically um, decreases your adult, yes, adult, which decreases um, the healing ability, so that one is the very important one for sustain builds to uh, remove, and of course fragile as well, fragiles um, basically lets the user the uh, decrease the, the effects of shield by 50% um, for the user. So of course, you, if you use play a lot of shield card, you don't want to have um, fragile. Uh, okay, so that is the one of the plants. And then let's look at the dawn. I think this is probably the most interesting one. Uh, first of all is that there's this rune. Uh, let me just go back here. So Arcane Protection, very strong rune, I would say. I think if I remember correctly, it's a rune that uh, as long as the this Axie has, um, let me think, uh, a buff. All right, so by for each buff that it has, then it decreases damage, um, basically reduces damage to this Axie by 5%, and it can get to a maximum of 20%. Right, so meaning if you need four buffs, and this is why there's this synergy where you have a clover to get a leaf, and a leaf is a buff as well. So a leaf uh, on this axis will be a counter as a buff, and then their cleanse definitely is a buff as well. I think the cleanser, um, there are probably other ways of getting buffs as well. Um, so that just means this is going to be very hard to get through. Um, okay, and let's look at the skills. Uh, which I'm definitely not too familiar with. Um, okay, so Gecko is very interesting. An AOE heal uh, does a bit of damage to itself, but then heals the rest. And then the, actually the heal is not the most important one. It's the cleanse that's very important. Um, cleanse everyone is just very strong, especially uh, if you have doubt, you have uh, maybe fragile, or you have um, vulnerable, all those we can just cleanse. Um, and okay, this is actually a very interesting card that I've never seen that much, but recently I have seen, is that basically it heals four times um, for 20, so it ultimately heals 80 randomly, I think, uh, across your team. And a very interesting part is that it also applies a damage boost, which I don't think it matters too much in this kind of build. And then uh, there's the Kataro, which is um, quite important for hitting um, summons like Mavis basically and of course it's also good for this energy in general uh, because usually if the opponent has three axes you will be able to play it for free and I assume it let me just check 
they might have I'm not sure okay they probably okay, I was gonna think say that they might have some charms that does something um, but I think it's just a standard charm not too sure um, okay and uh, here are the other interesting cards where these are the shields that um, let's just read the card text right? target any ally alright so each shield most shield does that right but the interesting part is next turn for each hit that the ally receives reflect 40% of the shield loss right so you can stack a lot of shields onto one let's say a front axis and if the opponent has to hit into the, the front axis then this you're gonna deal a lot of damage to the attacker while shielding right while not taking damage because they are only hitting into the shield and you're reflecting a lot of damage to the opponent's axis so very strong um, I think these got nerfed as well. Uh, I think this used to be 70 and reflects 50% or something. Um, so yeah, very strong. And uh, yeah, another fear as well. So um, it's just a combination of cards that's just very, very strong. Um, so a lot of healing and shield, literally. And uh, in a way, this is kind, can be a finisher. It's deal 60 in the end. So ultimately, if you are in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can just chip the opponent's... Um, Axie down so that the uh, Blood Moon can KO it with the Kataro. Okay, and the final Axie also very interesting um, because uh, it has the Strawberry Shortcake, which you don't really see that often. Um, but first, let's talk about Sakura. Uh, it's basically one of the buffs that buffs the Dawn. So that counts as another buff that then de allows the damage reduction for the dawn because of the rune and then um yeah it's just a standard shield um dealing a bit of damage okay this is yam is actually very important i think um when i say important is because i myself is a mavis player right and you hate to go against aoe's right and this is one of those cards where people you know like might hesitate to play mavis or others have summons that can just die to a yam so very very uh, important I would say and of course that uh, putting a bit of um, poison helps a bit um, but I think yeah um, okay puppy is actually quite good and because you don't have to play the card and it still heals you for 20 so I quite like this even for my own axi um, but yeah the strawberry shortcake I think is very strong I think part well the one of the reasons why they can play this is because they have the fear um so they have a lot of abilities to if let's go down to this axi again a lot of ability to apply fear to the opponent and so there could be turns where uh, the opponents just can't play anything because they have so many confused cards in their deck and they just have to get rid of the confused card and that's the kind of turn where you are like you don't you know there's not much you can do uh you might want to put some shield but then uh, there might be a downturn where you can actually use this opportunity to store up some healing ability. So what it does is that it's a two cost, uh, and it gives you two strawberries. This strawberry heals 60, so basically it's a two cost, heals 110, 20, but you can pay it up front. That's basically how it is. So that just means you can save it up first, and then later on when you know, the right time comes, you can actually use it. Um, so yeah, I would say very very strong sustain build, um, a lot of healing, a lot of shields, uh, a lot of reflecting damage, a lot of fear and cleanse. So I would say all those are basically the uh, key to having a important sustain build and also actually a um, summon to sometimes block an attack. Uh, another tip that I'll give you all is that uh, if you have a summon and uh, uh, well, one thing you can do is to put it up front so that you can actually force your opponent to hit into your um, summon first and then because a lot of cards have the initial and say initial deals extra damage that kind of thing but if they have to hit use their first cards to hit into your summon then they kind of lose that um, bonus for the initial bonus and another thing because I'm a bird player I would know is that sometimes uh, people will shuffle a blackmail into your deck and blackmail is a card that um, basically applies taunt to the very back uh, of the team and then if you do have a blackmail what you can do is to 
uh, put the clover at the back or any summons at the back and then play the black mail and then the taunt will go to the uh, summon and you force your opponent to hit into the summon uh, in the first attack so that could be pretty handy um, and okay so this is pretty much it in terms of the analysis so maybe we can actually jump into some of the gameplays and see how it goes um, okay interesting that oh they have like a win-loss win-loss kind of thing so maybe let's start off with just playing um, the first one why not um, okay let's see and okay let's just play this and let's just pause and see the teams again and now you can see the runes and charms which are I must say pretty uh, mm, I'll, I'll say basic but like you don't have the OP runes and charms I mean this uh, not the most difficult to get I would say um, and I would say this is probably the one of the more difficult to get one but uh, they did manage to get it so that's pretty good um, but I feel like you know like it's um, this I would say pretty standard runes and charms and that's why I would say sustained build um, can be quite budget meaning you don't need a lot of um, resources to get a decent sustained build because um, of course this is a very well optimized one um, but you don't have to uh, meaning uh, you can get a budget one with you know maybe less optimized but it can still function very well uh, with basic runes and charms um, okay so let's uh, quick look at the opponent as well it's a typical aggro team An extra energy here uh, grammar's fan very strong uh, interestingly to um, weak which is unfortunate for the, them is because uh, yeah going against sustain the weak doesn't really do anything um, okay, the cleanse can be pretty strong. Uh, yep, so another free energy, so that two free energy. Okay, then let's see how it plays out. Okay, so um, so Giuliani twenty three is going second. Um, okay, this is a typical turn one. Not much happening. Okay, so let's see how they play this. So Sakura. Okay, I mean that's probably a must. Um, okay, and then put in a shield up. Okay, pretty strong, pretty strong. Um, yeah, I must say I personally haven't played that much sustained build, so I'm learning quite a bit from it as well. Um, okay, getting quite a bit of pure water. So the bleed doesn't matter too much because they don't... Uh, oh, actually no, the bleed can matter if they play a card. Um, and yeah, so okay, so the secrets, I don't, don't see that much. So that is where the secrets comes in. Um, so the fear can be quite annoying to play against but at this point um, the opponent is actually doing a pretty good job and chipping down the front um, so let's see um, okay clover a healing mm, okay more fear coming in let's see so now the opponent is feared but luckily for the opponent um, they actually do get the AoE to KO the summon so actually they don't even um, get the leaves so, okay but they do get another clover which is very lucky I would say um, yep just putting out a lot of shield and go from there note that they're holding on to their pure water um, not exactly sure why but um, yeah it's partly because I really just don't play sustain builds uh, enough to know how it usually works um, but okay so they do have the Mavis up and um, Geo Yanni 23 couldn't really deal with it at this point but they finally get the Yam so I'm pretty sure the Yam will be played uh, at some point um, or maybe yeah so uh, just to get rid of the Mavis um, and they are actually shielding the um, um, Clover which is very interesting because right they uh, actually saw that the AOE could be coming and trying to save the Clover um, but the front is going down um, which might not be ideal but that's where Cucumber Slice comes in and AOE heal very strong and now it's back to uh, two-thirds of the health yeah it's, must be very annoying to play against oops sorry uh, so then okay uh, still can't get through the front for the opponent, which is pretty tough. 
Um, do get all four stacks of leaves from the clover. Do get the cartel value as well. And um, yeah, just healing. Just keep healing. Uh, so they managed to stall out a lot of turns already. And uh, I think the opponent's Mm, it's not easy to get um, through and you can see the cleanse cleanse very important right so you note that the front doesn't have the vulnerable because of the cleanse um, I think what we miss maybe they should have done the weak first before they do the vulnerable so maybe a bit of a misplay from the opponent because I definitely value the uh, vulnerable more than the weak um, okay so it's time to heal back again shield again uh, probably shield uh, more and um, yeah so all three axes is very healthy the opponent can't really do much um, so can they even get through one axe at this point um, yeah okay fragile pretty good um, but a bit too late probably um, let's see if um, they'll shift gear and change to protecting okay this is protecting the front um, and slowly chipping down the opponent as well so this is actually quite important because uh, now the opponent is on a timer so you want to slowly chip them down so that they actually go down faster um, okay so the front finally goes down and actually it's still not over I must say uh, it's still pretty close because got the vulnerable um, and so is you know, can still go down pretty easily if the opponent has very good attack but yep so now they're just stacking on basically this uh dawn because this dawn is really the key and okay this is where you can see that the summon blocks an attack which is pretty strong and yeah this the damage reduction is just too good um so 20 percent damage reduction you can see the amount of buff and yeah, I was thinking about the damage boost, why they have the damage boost, yeah, now I understand, right? So damage boost is also a buff as well, so they do have all four buffs. So they make sure that their team has all four buffs. And of course, um, yeah, the opponent can't really do anything uh, at this point, and that is GG. Okay, so that is a pretty good game. Um, let's look at another one that... Um, goes maybe a bit differently so let's see actually I want to look at one that's more like sustain versus an aggro and see how an aggro can actually beat down a sustain build um, okay let's see this time round how it goes let me pause the video again and um, look at the axis so this is basically the same it shouldn't be any different um, and the interesting ones are the opponents um well wow, very aggro sort of uh reptile which i haven't already seen that much um okay very good uh aquas is very strong and then a uh, very typical but uh, I, was I was gonna say typical um beast but actually not too typical in the sense that they do have little piece which okay that one is quite typical but they do have three nutcrackers which is not very common and uh, I would say no, no, not the most common but probably still quite common for uh, this particular rune I would say because this rune does extra damage so let me see um, alright let's see how the first turn goes so they're going first so Giuliani 23 going first up uh, up to play the clover and then save the sakura and then the reason being it should guarantee them to not get guarantee but at least like very likely that they will get a leaf as the buff so they are really thinking about the game plan of just stacking the dawn um, and getting the leaves up and getting yep so now already getting two different um, two different uh, buffs and unfortunately the uh, tarot didn't get the value but I don't think it matters because there's no, no other cards that um, Giuliani 23 can play so okay um, I'm just going to show this rune so this reckless hunter deals 20 extra damage okay so now is the time to shield up but you can see the front is actually quite low um, you know, the opponent might be able to get through uh, and the fragile makes the the shield a lot less effective so I feel like yeah, the opponent can actually get through the front so yep yeah, uh, not the best of draw uh, just now because 
of the combination of the fragile and this drawing shield card means the front just goes down. Um, okay, let's see. And now it's getting all the heal card. Uh, but unfortunately the heal doesn't really do much because um, there's nothing to heal so not getting the um, uh, shield and the heal card at the right time is just tough I would say so this is the risk that you well I mean sometimes you do get bad draws right where now you do want the heals and uh, okay they do get a bit of heals and um, shield but sometimes when your axes are at full health to get all the heals then uh, it's actually gonna be a bit of a waste okay so uh, the opponent's still taking some time to get through but the vulnerable very important so this little piece uh, might allow the opponent to actually get through um, the vulnerable very strong against it um, so it effectively the vulnerable I'll show you what it is it's like it receives 20 percent extra damage and so it negates the rune basically and um, okay getting a katara value not too bad but at this point it's um, still only turn 11 and it, um, the opponent is really dealing a lot of damage so well fortunately um, they t needed two hits to get through the clover so you can see how um, you can stack up your clover with shield such that it kind of uh, goes above the breakpoint in terms of his HP but wow our opponent has a very strong turn with the Ronin as well and once the Dawn is down it's going to be quite rough to come back um, okay let's see if um, they can do it okay and of course with the Fragiles uh, so it's a very anti um, anti uh, healing sustained build team that our opponent has with all the Fragile the Vulnerable I think Fragile is the one that really kills uh, Giovanni 23 this particular game just don't get to use the shield as efficiently as possible uh, so it looks like it's gonna be uh, not too easy okay a lot of damage coming through still surviving quite a bit um, but still a lot of turns to grind through um, yep. So it's trying to slowly chip at the opponent, but at this point, it's still a long way to go. Um, but still, I mean, not too bad because uh, healing back to, I won't say full, but at least a uh, pretty high health. Um, but yeah, the opponent just have very strong cards. Um, Ronan, close to getting a KO, not quite. Uh, but now the Blood Moon comes, and actually in this case, the Blood Moon works against Giuliani 23 because... Um, it will deal damage um, yeah so it also not just kill the opponent's axie but it will also kill your own axie the blood moon so sometimes when you play against sustained build so that's actually a pretty interesting turn right because there's so much shield that the opponent just doesn't really do much and opt for saving for some cards um, and now the opponents um, get a pretty strong draw and um, oh man should bypass the shield by hitting the back and actually it's still a pretty close game I would say but do get the vulnerable which I think is the key to success um, and keeping an Xe at a pretty healthy range is also very important and at this point just have to uh, shield up as much as possible but I think having one Xe being such a high health makes it a lot tougher uh, for Giovanni 23 because um, you want all the opponent's actually to go down at the same turn uh, but unfortunately yeah, the Blood Moon does KO and it is a very very close game but unfortunately um, because it's a healing team they don't really have any attack to get through um, I think it's just gonna shield up um, take the Blood Moon damage and um, actually, yeah, still very close. It's really just down to this particular turn where uh, the opponent managed to get just enough um, damage. And of course, with the Blood Moon, it just goes down. Um, yeah, and it's just surviving for 4 health because I was thinking it should be a draw, but whew, that was a very close one. And um, yeah, it was very close to a draw, but the opponent just surviving at 4 HP to get the win. So very, 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 very close game. Um, and yeah, this is how 
I guess potentially you can go against a sustained loop, but it still looks very, very, very tough to get through, uh, and requires a bit of bad luck. From the sustained build, there, there were some turns where they just get some healing cards with on their full health. So, yep, this is how a sustained build can work. And if it's the kind of thing that uh, kind of playstyle that you enjoy, then you know do give it a go and try it out. It can be a pretty fun game where instead of dealing damage, you're just basically negating damage and then uh, play to the alternate uh, alternative. Yeah, alternative. Uh, win con which is um, the blood moon but do note that the blood moon deals damage not just to the opponent actually but also to yours as well so you have to out heal the blood moon and the opponent's attack in order to win the game so um, yeah so it's uh, a lot of calculations a lot of thinking about where to put your shield and so on so if you like that kind of thing yeah do give it a go okay so this is it for today Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed my video, do consider giving me a like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, and use my Lenartian code MORRIS. Thanks again and have a good one.